other thing is that it is so fucking, so fucking, it is so my god, she's gonna love it. So much. She's not gonna have a meltdown. No, 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 not at all. Not at all. I can't anymore with the batteries going down in the construction. Hi and welcome to another Frivolous episode. Today I'm bringing you my current skincare routine. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Uh, you may have noticed. Because, because, uh, if you've been... Uh, on my channel and the subscriber for a while, you know that I've been pretty faithful to the same kind of products for quite a while, maybe over two years now. I've been all Paul's Choice and Geek and & Gorgeous and Paul's Choice and Geek and & Gorgeous because their products work for me and because I have pretty problematic skin in a whale, pretty, in a way, not whale, way, pretty finicky skin. I feel kind of weary of changing up products and then ending up with stuff that I don't care for that doesn't work for me. And I pay for basically everything that I get or that I have. So it's an investment and I don't want to make the wrong moves. But I'm a curious soul and I want to try new things. So because I have a strict policy of one in, one out with my skincare, because with my makeup it's not that easy. I've been um, slowly introducing new things to my routine and trying uh, a few new things. Some of these are really recent and I cannot give you a full review. Some others have been used for a bit longer so I can give you a, a sense of what it does or they do. But I have a kind of a fully renewed skincare routine that I wanted to go through with you and show you what I'm using. Currently, I'm not going to talk about cleansing products just because uh, those are the exception to my <laughs> one in one out rule and I keep rotating them depending on what I feel like using on that day, basically. So, yeah. Before we go any further, you may be wondering, hasn't she been wearing the same makeup for like uh, three videos in a row? Yes, <laughs> I have. Thank you for noticing. It's just that I don't have lots of time uh, to record. I can't record that often and when I can I try to do several videos in a row so that I can have some content for you or you will go through a drought period as you have been over the past few weeks. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's just what's happening. But anyway, let's move on to my skincare routine if we don't want to stay here all day, shall we? Shall. First thing, I'm not an expert in skincare or anything. This is, these are the products that I'm curious about and these are my experiences with these products. I'm just a consumer that wants to make the best informed choices possible and who is sharing her experiences with her own needs and her own tastes and likes with you. So it's just entertainment. Keep that in mind. So let's jump into skincare. Uh, let's do, I'll do a bundle of the kind of hydrating barrier repair stuff. What am I doing with my arms? Uh, separately, not in another video, but all of them together later. And I'll just start with the basics of the morning and evening skincare routines. Uh, let's start with the morning antioxidant lotion right now, um, or serum. This is the Saatchi Skin Trifala Pigmentation Corrector. Corrector, yeah. And I've been waiting for so long to try this. I've been wanting to try Saatchi Skin stuff for maybe two years now. Skin Minimalist's fault, by the way on Instagram, go follow her, she's brilliant. Um, but I really wanted to try their products. There's a kind of a cult following around them. It's a small indie brand, pretty expensive, uh, pretty luxurious looking stuff, very minimal line. So I was really interested, but again, I was using the same things over and over and a bit fearful. But last winter, I just, I took my wallet out and I decided to splurge on some Saatchi products and this is one of them. And finally the weather is a bit uh, warmer here in Portugal so I have stopped using my Paul's Choice Super 
antioxidant serum which is the one that is slightly oily in texture which I adore in the colder uh, months but now it's getting a bit too heavy for my skin and I introduced this one. I cannot give you a feedback on results regarding this product because I've only started using it about I know five days ago or something I like to introduce new things slowly into my routine not all at once but in terms of texture it is a lightweight kind of cream to fluid um, it smells of the ingredients uh, and it has a beautiful blend of ingredients they have lots of people po posting before and after pictures but as someone who's hyperpigmentation and melasma is not going down with laser I don't I don't have unreasonable expectations regarding a topical treatment but I'm curious and it feels lightweight on the skin so we'll see we'll see in a few months we'll talk up next in my skincare routine I uh, use for sure my sunscreen this is the La Roche-Posay Anthelios UV Mune 450 plus a fluid uh, invisible fluid ultimate protection ultra long UVA no perfume who is the dude naming stuff at La Roche Posay because this is a dude on too much coffee this this is that what is this this is not come on get one choose <laughs> pick a lane Find one good name with a, just a couple of words. Come on. This is their iconic. It used to be the shaker fluid and then it stopped being the shaker fluid and it was the invisible fluid. But it's their iconic SPF for the face that comes in this very specific specific packaging. And they've reformulated it uh, late last year, I think. And now it's hitting the shelves because the sun has come up in the uh, northern hemisphere. And they've reformulate, reform, reformulated it to be able to filter and protect from more or deeper UVA rays. So it has increased protection that no other, supposedly, no other sunscreen has up until now been able to protect. It has been a new uh, research and development, uh, development by La Roche-Posay and L'Oreal Laboratories. So that's that. What can I tell you regarding the texture of this? It's basically the same as the other shaker fluid or invisible fluid. The only difference I may notice is it's slight, but ever so slightly more liquidy. But I measure it with my little measuring spoon that I have in my bathroom and I use it no pro no problem. It's it's pretty liquidy, it's like a lotion. You massage it onto the skin, just create that layer and let it sink in. And it gets the job done it's super lightweight as you would expect from a fluid it doesn't this one doesn't have any perfume I've been loving it and it was my first purchase when I went to London <laughs> uh, that was not a um, musical theater <laughs> ticket or something <laughs> but yeah that's the first sunscreen the other one is the ultraviolet oh the super hyped Australian brand um, this is the Queen screen. My eyes are terrible. So this is a Queen screen SPF 50. This is kind of a serum, the, the sort of serum sunscreen uh, type of product. It is a very milky, I'd say very similar to this in terms of texture. The only difference is that this one leaves um, sort of a more glowy skin and if you use the correct amount which many people are tempted not to because it's so thin and it spreads so easily but you should if you use the correct amount it will give you a very glowy skin and it will feel pretty moisturized so keep that in mind I like that for some days for others not as much for the other days I usually go with one of these uh, more mattifying or more matte um, sunscreens but yeah this one is more of a glowy without being greasy heavy creamy sunscreens this is very similar and i have mentioned that on my empties if that video came out first this is very similar to the hello sunday the one that's a serum sunscreen spf 45 the difference is of course this is an spf 50 plus instead of 45 but the finish is very similar the texture is very similar 
the main difference from that one is the smell. The other one does not have a scent. This smells intensely of roses, as in the by Terry kind of fragrance. So those strong, heady rose scents and fragrances that some uh, of by Terry or most by Terry products have, which are not for everybody. For me, that's a downside because this is pretty strong and it lingers more than I would expect, in my opinion, <laughs> my personal, professional opinion of someone who put, put this on her face. I picked, uh, this is a sample size or a travel size, I picked a kit with all the ultraviolet sunscreens to try out, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a ball this summer. <laughs> this one was suggested uh, to me in the place where I do my laser treatment. This, I don't know if you can get it, where you can get it outside of Portuguese pharmacies and Spanish pharmacies. This is by Cantabria Labs and it's the Viretique's Tri-Active Anti-Blemish Gel. And it has salicylic acid, I think glycolic acid, niacinamide, so it's a strong powerful blend of actives for acne prone skin. And this, I've been using it um, on my skin basically daily underneath my retinols because my skin is used to it. Don't do that if your skin is not used to it. You can alternate the nights between your retinols and this or use this a couple of nights uh, a week or something. But I've been noticing quite an improvement on my chin acne and jawline acne because of this. Uh, it's pretty potent. It smells of alcohol. You know, it's pretty medicinal in that sense. It's not... Um, an elegant product. It's a gel that layers underneath other products without any problem and I like to use it in the evening because it does have the glycolic acid so the sun exposure with this on your face is not recommended. And I've been having amazing results. I've been using this for maybe a month and a half and that's how I can tell I've been noticing a difference in the the appearance of blemishes of new blemishes on my skin. The other product that I have recently introduced to my skincare routine up oh, it's the Saatchi skin. Again, this is the Ursolic acid, Ursolic acid and retinal overnight reform. It's their retinal serum. It's supposedly on par but a bit more moisturizing than the crystal retinal from Medicaid which I adore, and up until now has been my favorite retinal. I love the properties of retinal. For me, they do work, and I find them to be a very gentle anti-aging, gentle but powerful anti-aging product. Uh, this has a blend of other products, as I said, I don't know if I said that, but Saatchi products are a bit like Paul's Choice. Everything but the kitchen sink. And they have lots of great ingredients in this, but the main ones are the osolic acid, the retinol. I think they have niacinamide also. Uh, I can't remember the rest, but um, I've been using this just for about a bit over a week, so I, I can't report on results. And I've been using it alternately with the Biretics because I'm introducing them one to the other. So first I alternate and then I will combine them in the same routine. But for now, I've been using this on its own in the evening. It's a bit, as I said, a bit more moisturizing in terms of texture um, than the Medicaid, but it's not a cream, a luscious, nourishing cream, I'd say. You may need, if you're not combination, you may need to go over with um, a moisturizer on top of this or use something to buffer this uh, if you'd like. So I uh, can't wait to share results. Just let me tell you, this is one of my favorite packaging uh, products that I've purchased in a while. It's so luxurious. All I wanted to have is the full Saatchi range on my nightstand and that's it. <laughs> Next up, let's talk about eyes. And I have two products here. One is the Pores Choice Ceramide Enriched Firming Eye Cream uh, with retinol and vitamin C. I love this cream for um, wrinklage and it's pretty nourishing. I really like it. I haven't been using it because I have kind of an eczema situation on my eyes that I haven't pinpoint the origin of. Please let it not be eyeshadows overall. But uh, yeah, when my 
eyes are fine and that they don't have any problem. This is what I use nightly and I really love this cream. It's a rich uh, nourishing cream that does not feel heavy because it has a kind of silicone-y formula from Paula's Choice. And the other one is the one that I use when my eyes are going berserk, like in this case. It's the Topialis Palpebral from SVR Laboratories. Um, I'm almost out of it. I'm buying one from Dupre next to compare. But yeah, this is the one that I use that I know that it's not going to sting my eyes uh, when I need a bit of hydration on my eyes, despite them being a bit... And now for the moisturizing hydrating section, I'm going to go from thinnest to thickest. The first thing that I have here is La Roche-Posay Tolerian Ultra 8 Mist. I still love this. This is a glycerin based um, kind of hydrating product and I've done a naughty thing which you shouldn't do because things are formulated to work as they are and you will never know how they behave if you start mixing stuff together that is not meant to be mixed, but I put in here a bit of the um, liquid hydration from Geek and Gorgeous. I mixed it in here and I love this spray. <laughs> don't tell anyone, don't tell any of my friends that are um, pharmacists and they're watching this right now. I'm sorry, but I, I love this. It's super fresh. It it has that mm, I it has that boost of hydration that I love. It's still very thin. It's a water. It hasn't changed the consistency in any way, but yeah, I decided to do that mix with this little bottle. I have the big one that I decan sometimes uh, for the smaller one so that it doesn't take too much space on my counter. But yeah, when I, when I use this up, I will go back to using them separately, but I've been having a great experience with them both together. Just letting you know, one is glycer glycerin based, the other one, the other one is panthenol based. It's just, just, just details. Now this is the replacement for my uh, Geek and Gorgeous Stress Less, which is a madacasicide. I think that's how it's pronounced, serum. And madacasicide is the active ingredient in Centella asiatica, and this is the. Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Ampoule. And this was recommended to me by one of my subscribers that has been struggling a lot with acne. And she said that this has been working at wonders for her. And, you know, Centella is kind of a healing, a healing barrier repair kind of product. And I decided since I was running out of this to go get this one to replace it, I got the I got it through YesStyle, and this is a very liquidy, uh, fluid, it's almost like a water basically, it has barely any viscosity to it, and it has barely any kind of slip to it, does it have any slip to it? Hardly any, so it will sink into the skin really quickly, uh, it's very nourishing, it's great to buffer your retinoids if you see fit or to apply after using an exfoliating acid just to kind of balance things out and it's a wonderful product. I have been using this just as you can see. I've used this for a few weeks oh, so I don't have any feedback to give you except that it didn't break me out and it feels really good on the skin and it can go basically in at any moment of the routine, which I really appreciate. One is the old, the other one is the new that I couldn't resist trying. Uh, one is the old Ceramidin Mist Cream Mist, which is the first, my first encounter with uh, the, a cream in a mist form, which is super lightweight, super hydrating, and this is packed full of ceramides, which are great for the skin. And this is one of my favorite products of all time. It does have a fragrance that I personally appreciate and that does not interfere with my skin, but you may find it different. And I really love this product and I keep rebuying, but on my latest Yes Style purchase where I got this, um, I got to choose a mini of the Laneige Cream Skin. And I think I like the Laneige one a bit better. It's just a tad, a tad more creamy. Still a liquid, but more creamy. The downside is that this this does not have a spray. I think they have a mist version of this. I don't know if it's the same. 
with a just with a pump or if it's a different formula but this the cream skin one oh, wow it's just it's you know you apply it to your skin and it feels like it's smoothing everything out um super nourishing super hydrating delightful to layer say with this um underneath a more harsh or after a more harsh uh treatment it's just ah uh, my life my life has been improved i love both of these um this also has a, a the the laneige one also has a fragrance a bit of a fragrance it's less intense than the ceramidin i love both of the scents so it's fine by me i don't know i i'm pretty torn great it's two very good products i don't need to take sides it's just two re two great products that do the same thing and that i really like that's good we don't need to take sides people the last product that i still keep in my routine is not a new one and i've been trying not to use it up this is the uh skintegra sk una uh cream which is the one for um allergy prone skin and it nourishes repairs and relieves discomfort and this is the one that i use when i go and do my laser treatments and stuff like that and i stop everything and i just use this in a very gentle um cleanser from Paula's Choice and in the morning this and or a mist like this uh, repairing mist and then just my sunscreen very gentle products and this is the one that I go for I fell in love with Skintegra um, moisturizers the one that has pepti peptides was also amazing those were sent to me uh, but they didn't even ask me to feature uh, their products, which, you know, they know I will. <laughs> but anyway, I fell in love and I have already repurchased with my own money one of these because I love this so much and it's the one thing that I know that will not uh, make my skin aggravated in any way, shape or form with in any situation that I've gone through, be it lasers, allergies, and I, I even applied this to my eyes when the SVR Palpebrial, yeah, Palpebrial, Palpebrial, the lid cream, <laughs> uh, when the SVR eye cream wasn't working and it was stinging my eyes, I could apply this one, which is thicker, and hence I love it even more, I would apply this to the eyes and it would be fine and pretty soothing. So this is one of those that I have been happy to try and very fortunate to be able to try and that I will keep purchasing because I I can't see myself trying something better than this in this kind of range of products. If I'm missing out on something, let me know. <laughs> and this is my current skincare routine. Um, if you are wondering in which order do I apply my skincare, I use the basic rule of thumb of thinnest to thickest um, and then I adjust the order if I want a specific ingredient to have more impact on my skin it goes before other stuff you know if I want something to be less impactful I buffer it with like a scent the centella serum something like that and then I go in with or even with something creamier like this a creamy a, a liquid and then I go in with the stronger active. I like to personally use my acid exfoliating acids before everything else and I like to have to apply my antioxidants directly on my bare clean skin uh, but yeah basically that's my process. As I said most of the hydrating products and uh, barrier repair products and stuff I use and interchangeably and I rotate depending on what my skin uh, feels and needs and what how much time I have but basically in the evenings I either do an exfoliating acid and then very repairing and nourishing ingredients afterwards so that my skin is glowing the next day or I may use something like the centella to buffer um, my something that I'm introducing to my skin like this uh, retinol or I use it afterwards, it kind of ebbs and flows depending on what my skin needs. And in the morning, my basics are the antioxidant and the sunscreen, and then sometimes I add a few spritzes of a hydrating product. But yeah, that's it. 
I hope you have enjoyed my updated skincare routine as usual. If you have, please consider subscribing, leave me a thumbs up and comment down below what you want to see next from me, what other products you think I should try. And as usual, thank you for spending your time on me and I'll see you on my next video. Bye!